the start again. No, yeah. that's the that's the, the, the start. Licking record. It is okay. So now we're gonna go to the next page, which is uh, Likutei Maharan. Likutei Maharan means the gathering. Likutei means the gathering. This is Rabbi Nachman's magnum opus. Mm -hmm. He he only wrote about fifteen percent of what's in here. The rest was transcribed by his main student, Rabbi Nussan, like eighty percent. Another ten percent by other students, and I think. Oh, yeah. So it's Likute Maharan is Moreno, Veharabeno, Rab Nachman. Ah, okay. That's what that means. It's acronym. Mm -hmm. So. It's great stuff in here. Uh, ah, so when I was younger. I used to listen to Jim Morrison and the Doors a lot. Yeah. I was a big Doors fan. Who brought up with the Doors? Now, a lot of people say, oh, how can you say this and look uh, Rabbi Nachman at the same time? Uh, you should be thrown out, you know. So, but uh, this is how I came to this Torah. So, so Jim Morrison had a famous line, uh, I've been doing time in the universal mind. Um, I've been feeling all right. It was a famous song that they did. So I'm like, wow, universal mind, wow, oh, that's so cool, right? Fast forward uh, 40 years later. That's a great thing. <laughs> yeah, right? Fast forward 40 years later. Mm -hmm. I'm reading the Kutay Maharan. Yeah. I almost had a, uh, almost fell off my chair. What does Rabbi Nachman say? Now there is a universal mind <laughs> and there are individual minds. <laughs> I started cracking up. I couldn't believe that Rabbi Nachman said such a thing. Mm -hmm. Said, I said, finally I'm free of Jim Morris. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it was confirmation that it was okay. Right, also. Right. Also, well, that, that Jim, Jim Morrison... Jim Morrison and, got it from there. No, no he took it from somewhere else. But I'm saying that all these, I don't want to just say non-Jews, but everything that goes on in the world is, 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 is sourcing from somewhere. It's not new. People are looking for something. Mm -hmm. I mean, God forbid, even like Jim Morrison, he died, overdose and Janis Joplin, Jimmy Hendrix. They were looking for stuff. It's not... Mm -hmm. I should have made that connection just for you. Yeah, yeah, so it's, uh, it's yeah. unbelievable that, what's Rabbi Nachman talking about? Universal mind. Like, what? Hello? This is a song. <laughs> it, blew my, it blew my mind. Mm -hmm. So check this out. Rabbi Nachman is always going to blow your mind. <coughs> so this is the Kutay Maharan, book one. I'm sorry, book two, Torah 72, mm -hmm. uh, number three. This is Tiluktei Maharan Tinyana. Check this out. Now, there is a universal mind and there are individual minds. And we'll, do, we'll, we'll, we'll learn one or two more and then we'll look at the commentary. All the individual minds received from the all-inclusive mind. Namely, the leading sage of the generation. Okay, stop. So, okay, whatever that means. Let's go to 25... So there, now there is universal mind and individual mind. What does Rabbi Nachman mean? Let's look at the commentary. So earlier, Rabbi Nachman similarly distinguishes between individual intellects and the comprehensive upper intellect, for which the individual intellects receive and are encompassed. From the earlier lesson, we learned that what differentiates individual minds from the universal mind is the Kabbalistic concept of tzimtum, contraction. Okay. Just as God contracts his infinite light in order to produce a finite universe, he contradicts his infinite wisdom to produce finite individual minds. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We were just talking about that. Mm. Mm. Wow. This person. How so? Uh, what was the connection? Just, uh, just, uh, Figure it out. You let, let us know as we go. It's going to come back to you. Yeah. The wisdom of the end soft the infinite one is the root of all human wisdom and intellect. Mm -hmm. okay. However, as the Rebbe taught in lesson, an earlier lesson, it is impossible to know and comprehend the wisdom because the end soft the infinite is God Himself, and His wisdom is altogether incomprehensible. Nevertheless, it is God's will that human beings know and recognize Him. This requires that they have at least some measure of das, of, of unitive knowledge. See how he translates das, you never heard that. Oh, it was about the, um, the part about the uh, infinite, the, the, that uh, two types of learning, learning for, for results, and learning without any results, and actually nice. studying the Torah, 
is actually a gift from God, which is the Torah's infinite for a finite mind. It's very hard to understand, but I, I get it. Very mm -hmm. nice. That's right. I'm mainly spiritual. Rabbi Fon said that. It's beautiful. Yeah. Mainly spiritual. Yeah. But I never heard Das of called the unit of knowledge. You never said that. It's a, whole, it's a wisdom, knowledge. Infinite knowledge. How does Chabad say? Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. But the Rabbi Nachman, the Chacham Bina Das, but he says unit of knowledge and awareness to God of God. Yeah, okay. that is knowledge, but I never heard it. Infinite. He calls it unit of knowledge. It means it's uniting things, which it makes sense because it's it's a, it's taking from Chochman Bina and then Das. So it's very, it's all, all connected. To this end, he, contra he contracts his unf unfathomable wisdom to make it perceptible to human intellect. Mm -hmm. The Rebbe next applies this to his teaching here about the greatness and illumination which come from exchanging glances with the truth of the... Exchanging gazes, I'm sorry. <sighs> okay, whatever that means. Okay, let's keep moving. Okay, be well, because the truth savvy right. is really connected Right. to the universal mind. Correct. And the energy of the tzaddik is such right. that when you gaze at the tzaddik right. and the tzaddik gazes at you, right. You're getting you, you get some of the energy of course. from the tzaddik. But who's, who's the tzaddik now? Who's, no one's alive. And so I, I thought I played devil's advocate. I don't see a great tzaddik anymore. Like the Baba Cherebi is not around. Like there's great people who you know, passed away. Like we do have gener every, every generation there are very righteous people but there's Big Sadi, not too many, they're right? Hidden. Do we hang out with them? They're not. They're hidden. Okay, so I thought it's the, it's right the learning. They're huh? hidden. Huh? You right here, Carl. I understand. I understand. You don't know who right. they are. Right, but even a friend is a tzaddik sometimes. Mm -hmm. when you have sometimes your friend, friend is a tzaddik. Mm -hmm. Shlomo used to call that. Yeah. So it's not universal, it's more individual right now. We're all brothers to each other. Yeah, yeah. Not everybody's going right. to share. <laughs> you take yeah. all the pressure off. Yeah, but what I'm saying also, what I thought is that when you connect to the book, to the learning that's also connected to the tzaddik. You're also gazing yes. at the tzaddik. That's, how, yeah. that's where but I came from. When you have a living tzaddik, right. it's very it's cool. different. It's much more powerful. No doubt, but it's also very dangerous to be around a great tzaddik because a lot of people crash. When I was around the Lubavitcher Rebbe for mm -hmm. 25, 30 years, what people couldn't handle, they wanted to be holy, they didn't want to keep things, and they, they couldn't handle, the vessels couldn't handle it. Right. Yes. Tons of crashes. I mean, I remember in Yeshiva, what do you mean by Guys would be in yeshiva for two years, all of a sudden he'd, he'd go to, he wouldn't come home. Next day they found he was uh, uh, arrested, he's in jail. He, when he drank, he, he couldn't handle the learning anymore. He, he got completely drunk, and alcohol poisoning, and just crashed. A lot of people that came to Lubavitch in those days, you know, were involved in crazy things, and then wanted to become religious, so it was a quick change. Oh, drastic change. Uh, yeah, drastic change, and they couldn't handle it. And he would crash. So mm -hmm. you're around this great man, people were crashing all the time. And most, you know, I saw it all the time. That's it was very hard to, to be, be there. That had to be Rabbi Shlomo after that. Like, for example, if a guy touched his beard a little bit, they'd kill him the next day. You're touching your beard, you know, you're, you're stopping the shield. Saying, when dealing with yeah, Bali Chuva, yeah. you get into a very rough environment. A great, a great tzaddik, you know what I mean? Oh, you, know, yeah. you can't wear jeans anymore, you know, you can't. So people, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't easy. I remember I had suffering, a lot of suffering. Yeah. It was great and suffering at the same time. Mm -hmm. I remember. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't all bad, it was a lot of great. So, yeah. so let's move on. And yeah, the good notes on the 27th Yeah, yeah. Well, we're, we didn't do 26 yet. Okay. <coughs> Namely, the leading sage of the generation that we received from his mind. So 26, let's read. Uh, it might be on the next page. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I used my copy, which is not a full, so mm -hmm. I, I butchered it a little bit, sorry. You got the next page, um, page 446 on the top? Yeah. Okay, so 26. As explained in the previous note, the wisdom of the end self, which is the infinite, is the root of all human wisdom and intellect. However, people's minds are finite, and no person can fathom God's infinite wisdom until it's transformed into individual intellects of either the contraction and division. The there is, however, an exception. Rabbi Nachman taught in the previous section, final paragraph, that there is one whose mind is quick and sharp, who is constantly occupied with expanding his mind and, and das, the true tzaddik. Wow. By virtue of a lifetime wholly dedicated to serving God, including unqualified devotion to the study of Torah and supreme self-sacrifice and prayer, he attains the loftiest and least contracted levels of infinite wisdom accessible to a human being. In section 4, we will see 
that the most perfect personification of the true tzaddik is Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu. Here the Rebbe identifies him as the leading sage of the generation whose mind, having risen to the highest level of expansiveness, Moach HaGadlut, is all-inclusive. Unlike individual minds, which have circumscribed and partial perception, the scope of the true tzaddik's awareness is godlike in its comprehensiveness and uncontracted boundlessness. So, Sefirah, he achieved nine or ten? When he, only, when he died, he went to, to the 50th gate, but before he died, he was on 49. Only when he died, he hit 50. Mm -hmm. Moses. Oh, Moses. But there were a few instances where he lost it. When he got upset, yeah. he forgot the Torah. Yeah. Also, he asked God a few times, and, and God told him, and one time, you know, he, he went to God and he said, well, the Egyptians are putting the Jewish babies in the cement. Why are you doing this? And God mm -hmm. says, you know, I'm not saying anything. I, this, is, this is my will. God, and Moses says, no, I'm taking them out. So Moses took one of the babies out. And later on, this baby grew up and he was the one that created the, the golden calf. Right. That, that, that's just one oh, thing. Oh. Then another thing, when, when Moses... Uh, God showed Rabbi Akiva to Moses and Rabbi Akiva was teaching and mm -hmm. Moses was like never heard such Torah right. and because and it says Rabbi Akiva was teaching the, the crowns on top of the letters what that meant and Moses go whoa what's this guy where, where, where'd he come from and, Mo, and God tells Moses uh, you taught this you already gave this Torah and Moses I, I, don't, I never saw it but he said but you already gave it so Moses was like really impressed he never heard it before he, and then, Moses, then God showed Moses Rabbi Akiva being murdered, mm. being killed by the Romans. And then Moses says, this guy you showed me was the greatest guy. Now you're showing me he's being killed a horrible death. What's going on here? How could you do such a thing? And, and God said to him, be quiet. There's a whole Torah on what that means, be quiet, mm. which I'm working on next time. But Because uh, God also taught things when he was quiet. God also yes. says God created with words. Mm -hmm. And letters, God also created with silence. Mm -hmm. yeah. And not saying anything. Mm -hmm. There's a whole Torah in Lukatan Moran mm -hmm. about it. mind blowing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Never hear this stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so this is the benefit of meriting and exchanging glances, gazes with the true tzaddik, who is the sage of the generation, the concept of the all inclusive sage. Um, okay, we basically said that already. As a result of that all-inclusive sage seeing and gazing at him, a person's mind shines. What does that mean? 28. So do, so by the way, do, do, do you mind. remember when people would walk away from the Mababa to where the... Do you look at the videos oh, of course. and see that their faces are shining? Too. Listen, I, was, I went to the Baba Trebis for Rengans for 20 years. Mm -hmm. I was a young kid. I knew nothing was going on. I just would stand there and stare at me. Yeah, but you got a lot. Right? So, That's why you're doing this now. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy. Thank God I could share and share my experience. I remember being at, at, in, in 770. It was packed. Everything was 10,000 people, 8,000 people. The Rebbe would come in. There was a light. I'm telling you, it, was, sure. it wasn't physical. It was like, it was so like, wow, what was that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then when he left, it was like, it was weird. Mm -hmm. It was very weird. <coughs> okay, so when you gaze at a tzaddik, your, your mind shines. The all-inclusive mind of the true tzaddik contains God's infinite wisdom on the highest level possible. By his seeing and gazing at a person, the leading sage instills that individual's mind with the contracted measure of wisdom from his own all-inclusive mind. In this way, the tzaddik causes the mind's person's mind to shine with the illumination of that. Wow. Rebbe also says when you're happy you become smarter. Your mind expands when you're happy and you can think better. So just by looking at something you can get gain wisdom. That's what he's saying. Without without the transfer of knowledge. That's what he says. Obviously you have to be open to it. And on the and on account of his mind shining he receives greatness because greatness is primarily produced by the mind shining, as mentioned above. So shining mind would be another word for uh, a person is bright, a person is what? Uh, open. Enlightened. Enlightened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Person's like amazing, okay. effervescent. Person's like, whoa. Person's like, wow, I love person talking to that guy. Yeah. She's amazing. He's amazing, right? Okay. Um, 
on account of his mind shining, he receives greatness because greatness is primarily produced by the mind shining, as mentioned above. This is because uh, eyes refer to wisdom, as is written. Then the eyes, of both of them are opened, and Rashi comments, this was said with respect to wisdom. Okay, let me just shut this off for a second.